All this plastic came from one little stretch of this beach, just washed up in the top few inches of sand. And there's so much more of it floating out there in the ocean. So where does all this plastic come from? Research shows that one way plastic gets into the oceans and onto these beaches is through rivers. Well, Oregon has a lot of rivers. So we're going to go out and test and see if we can find plastic in them, science style. Our idea is pretty simple. We'll travel around to some of Oregon's most iconic rivers, the places we play and the source of our food and drinking water. We'll take water samples and then we'll bring them back to the lab to see if we can find visible and microscopic plastic. Simple idea? Yes. But execution? Well, we're journalists, not scientists. So we do what we always do. We find ourselves an expert. Hey, hey, how's it going? All right. Hey, I'm Jess. Nice to meet you, Elise. Yeah. I'm Cassandra. Hi, nice to meet you. Scientist Elise Granick has agreed to help us with this project, along with undergraduate Ashley Peterson and baby Noah. Junior scientist in training. Yeah, there we go. Elise is going to teach us how to sample for microplastics using a fine mesh net in the river. So I think that's called the cod. Cod end of the net? Yes. Did you know that? I've been out with a plankton net before. I just haven't used it. (laughs) Oh, your hat disappeared. Elise's lab studies how microplastics affect marine creatures like oysters and crabs. Okay. So the way this works is it's a plankton tow, and the idea is that you have a large volume of water that can pass through this net. But first, we have to ensure that any plastic we find actually comes from the water and not us. So we live in a plastic world, right? It's really hard for us to find shoes that have no plastic whatsoever, right? I see some mesh on yours. Mine have straps. I had no idea, right? Yeah. I, you just don't totally. even think about it. Yeah. We remove as much plastic as possible from the area. We clean everything, set up a control, and rinse the jars. So you'll shake it for maybe 30 seconds like that. And again, my arm's getting tired. We're not the first people to look for microplastics in rivers, but very little is known about how much plastic is in Uh, Oregon's rivers. To find out, we need to get the net into the river. All right, ready? Okay, I'm gonna go down. All right. All right, we got 15 minutes of this. Uh, Yep. Still, there's a lot of water in the river. Back out, okay. And we don't know if we'll find what we're looking for. Think of plastics as needles in a giant liquid haystack. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go, okay. Ugh. Some sludge? Oh, that's some sludge. All right, there you go. Oh yeah, there's plastic in there. I'm feeling it. With the first sample site in downtown Portland complete, it's time for the next phase of our plan. We've decided to test a total of eight sites along Oregon's most populated rivers. Cassandra will sample one site on the Columbia River and two more on the Willamette. I'll be taking samples at two sites each on the Rogue and Deschutes. We chose these sample sites intentionally, trying to get what we expect will be plastic-free samples high up in the watersheds, and then see how they compare to populated sites farther downstream. Now we've got the gear, we've got the training, it's time to do some science. I have raided my closet and looked for anything that was made out of 100% cotton. So we've gotta make sure it stretches out, right? Wow. River wants to take it. Banks of the Rogue River, right in Grants Pass. At this point, we've basically traveled through all the population centers that the Rogue River travels through. Oh my goodness, so tangled. All right. I did this wrong. Whew. That's pretty heavy. All right. 15 minutes. Get comfy. My waders are split. I'm soaking wet. Oh, shoot. The net doesn't seem to want to sink. Other than that, everything's good. All right. There's a lot going wrong at this point, and uh, the water just made it to my butt. 
Uh, here we go. I don't know, I'd be surprised if there's plastic up here. I mean, if there is, then it's incredible. Oh, there's styrofoam. Ooh! I think I see some plastic. It is definitely not of the river. Oh, that looks Wow. Good. That's it. In Oregon, plastics are getting into the rivers in a couple obvious ways. First is litter, plain and simple. The plastic trash that ends up in the river eventually breaks down into tinier and tinier particles. Other kinds of plastics start out tiny, invisible to the naked eye. Plastic fibers are constantly shedding from our clothes when we wash them. They end up in wastewater treatment plants that don't have the technology to filter them out. Will we find some of these escaped microfibers? Three, three. Only the lab will tell. This is Tumalo. Tumalo two. This is on the Deschutes River. The first step is to get rid of the sticks and leaves. All right. We use a chemical that dissolves everything organic. Can you see it? It's starting to go. Turning it into a fine, soupy goo. It looks a little like the bottom of your coffee pot. With some clear-ish samples in hand, we go to researcher Dorothy Horn to show us what we're looking for. All right, guys, so these are our samples. First up is the sample them. taken from the Willamette River near Albany, where Cassandra actually saw trash go into the net. And this actually has a chunk of styrofoam in it, so that's probably part of the floating trash that you saw. And so when you're looking at these under the microscope, you're going to be looking for things that aren't as big as the styrofoam chunk. What are you looking for? So we're looking for something that doesn't look like it should be there. So something bright, usually, like bright colors or really white or a really standard shape. I don't know how you would see anything in the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's like hunting through the forest for a yeah, tiny, awful. tiny twig. So there's a fiber right there. So in the microscope, it's blue. Oh yeah, it's, it's like really, really obvious. Blue. And it's mm -hmm. very smooth. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the other stuff in there, it's like wavy or chunky, mm -hmm. or it looks fibrous in a natural way. Dorothy then uses the attached computer to measure the plastic piece we found. So here's a scale bar. So that's one millimeter in length, right? And here's our fiber. And is there a definition for a microplastic? Anything less than five millimeters. So this is micro. This yeah. is definitely micro. This might not seem like much plastic, considering how tiny many of these fibers are. But consider that our rivers are giant conveyor belts, constantly taking our trash out to sea. Estimates are we'll have more ocean plastic than fish in just 30 years. Now the question is, will we find plastic near the pristine headwaters of the Rogue River, where virtually nobody lives? Could we be that saturated with plastic? Do we need to put a wager on this? Are we going to no, no, no. Are we going to find <laughs> plastic upper Rogue, like very few people above? Are we? <laughs> That's it? You're kidding me. No, no, no. Look. That cannot be that sample. Look, I just opened it. Don't be sad. Or maybe be sad. There it is. Yep, there you go, right there. Yep. In the end, we identified these kinds of fibers and other plastic fragments in all of our samples. But we'll need some additional testing to make sure what looks like plastic actually is. <sighs> Where is this stuff coming from? Okay. Like, that just boggles my mind. So th most of the fibers come from us washing our clothes. Right. So many studies have been done now, and up to 700,000 fibers per load of laundry goes into the gray water, uh -huh. which goes to the wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. There are no wastewater treatment plants above where this is. I mean, there's probably some septic systems. Okay, so there you go. That's what it is. It's septic systems. Some of Oregon's river plastic will travel from these remote spots all the way to the ocean. And then... I'm a fish or a little crab, and I come along, I'm like, ooh, it looks like the same thing I eat. If it is a crab that we eat or a fish that we eat, then it does matter to people. Because then some of that plastic could show up inside of us.